Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Now, some of what we've done up to this point is that we have um, <clears throat> the first couple of classes, we set in motion the reality of what um, uh, what the Gospels are not and what they're not really emphasizing, which was rather shocking <clears throat> because we found that you really almost can't find the gospel in the gospels. And we looked, at, we looked at a few scriptures that seemed to really say it, and then found out that, that very, the, the best one that they had wasn't shared in the other gospels, even though the story was. They just left out that most important part. And so from several things, we concluded that the goal of the gospels was not to communicate the gospel as we know it, the gospel of salvation, <clears throat> but the kingdom of God. Now, we're still, and in, in tonight possibly we will finish up sort of a, uh, I started to say a preparation, how about a pre-preparation? Yeah, a pre-preparation. And, uh, and we're just sort of, um, outlining and giving a basic feel of what the Gospels really, really intend on emphasizing. And their main object that we've discussed so far that it emphasizes is what? Good. I'm glad y'all been listening. Oh, I heard them. I heard them on Skype. Thank you very much. Yes. The kingdom of God. Just for that. I can't believe y'all don't remember. <laughs> What's the point? <clears throat> All right, the kingdom of God. So uh, I'm going to ask you to, if you don't remember anything else, of hours of teaching, <laughs> I'm asking you to remember that the point is the kingdom of God. That's all. That's all I'm asking here. <clears throat> All right, so let me read a little bit and then we'll look at our verse here. <clears throat> There's a contrast between Jesus' definition of believing in him in terms of what it meant to follow him compared to modern day doctrines of salvation. God's goal was to establish his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so we get Matthew 6 and verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And... Uh, so, <clears throat> the first thing, well, there's, you know, there's so much in that little bitty scripture there, verse 10. Amazing. Really an amazing amount of things. And, and um, I think maybe we skip over some of it because we, which we do in many scriptures, we, we get used to certain phrases or we read it and we think it's sort of a King James slang or something or just way of saying it the way they said it and so we don't really read it for what it's trying to communicate so let me read this sentence first the kingdom of God concerning Jesus entailed far more than just taking him to heaven and making him lord of the material world okay for some people <clears throat> that's the kingdom of God that you know Jesus went to heaven and he became lord over the material world Okay, and that's, there it is. Okay. And again, we're not going to fully examine those things until uh, a couple of classes down the road here. But we're just sort of setting the stage for it. Um, bringing in the kingdom of God is meant to relate to the manner in which men are governed. A long time ago, somebody asked me, well, where is the kingdom of God? And I said, anywhere Christ rules. <laughs> anywhere Christ rules. Because if he's ruling, he's king. He's Lord. And so that's the kingdom of God. <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, that's a pretty simple, simplistic answer. You don't hear that one used very often. And yet, there's so many explanations of what the kingdom of God is about 
But that one you can't refute. <laughs> you can't refute it. <clears throat> and if the goal of the Lord in relationship to the kingdom of God has to do with government, he's not talking about setting up a government. He's talking about how he would govern you. Now, we're not necessarily talking about from a throne. As it were, we're talking about from the throne of your heart. Because if, you know, I mean, uh, I always think of examples such as, uh, you know, Hezekiah and Josiah, some of the really good kings that were in Israel. And you read of their reforms, and they tore down the idols of so-and-so, and they reinstated the, the, the scriptural offerings and things like that. And you just, I mean, I remember reading it and thinking, man, you know, wouldn't it have been cool to live at that time in the kingdom that it would have been so, you know, compared to those bad kings and stuff, all you got to do is go over to the prophets that prophesied at the same time, and you ought to hear the stuff they say. Right at the same time, there's all this junk going on. You're going, well, I thought, I thought if a good king sat on the throne that everything would be godly. Well, the only thing we can be assured of is if a godly king sat on the throne, the only godly thing is him. Everyone else may sort of try to do or do what he says. And so people are going, oh, I can't wait for Jesus to come down here and set up a throne and be king and everything. I tell you what, if he can't rule your heart, you know what I mean? If he can't govern your insides, doesn't do much good to have him on a throne. Because what will happen is exactly what the prophets wrote about. With your mouth you say such wonderful things and you love the Lord and all this kind of stuff, but your hearts are far from him. Okay. And so so the kingdom of God, first and foremost, has to relate to governing governing us governing us on the inside. <clears throat> All right. Um, it is how his will gets done in earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. And one of the phrases that the Lord got me on a lot of years ago was that I noticed it didn't say on earth. Hmm. I wonder what that's referring to. Well, his kingdom come he wants his kingdom to come inside the molten magma of the planet. <laughs> uh, obviously, that's not it. So where's the earth? Well, we're the earth. Well, that's what we're made from, the dust of the earth. And he wants his kingdom to come not just on earth, but in earth. And that would be in us. And that clearly begins to move this outside of the realm of certain things that people say, well, the kingdom of God is you know, in heaven or the kingdom of God is this or that. Um, he wants, and not only wants it to be on earth, in earth, as it were, but wants us to pray that way. You know, people say, well, I don't know what to pray. You ever heard somebody say that? Well, I don't know what to, well, just pray what Jesus said to pray. You know, Lord, may your kingdom come in us as it is in you. And I say that because heaven, I mean, I don't want to get into a whole bunch of that stuff, but what is heaven without Jesus? Well, for me, it'd be hell, you know what I mean? Because, I, I mean, I, I'd mess it up. So where he is, that's where I want to be, where he is. And that's what he said. I go away to make a place for you, to prepare a place for you that where I am, where I am the I am, that where I am, you may be also. He's trying to bring us, see all of that is, is lines up with everything that the, the epistles are talking about. It is telling us that he doesn't just want to save us from hell. He wants us to be joined in oneness with him and partakers of the divine nature, as it says in 1 Peter, or 2 Peter. 
All right. So, um, and then also notice that the phrase is, as it is in heaven, that kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so in, this, in other words, in the same manner that the kingdom is accomplished in heaven, well, how is it ac accomplished in God? How is the kingdom accomplished in God? How do you get him governed by the kingdom? Well, he's governed by his own nature. You could even say it like this. He's governed by his essence. <clears throat> All right. But, you know, I've said this before, so I just wanna, I want you to follow this. I've said that if, if there was a law, if God had ten commandments sitting there, I'm just painting a picture here, okay. You know, if God had ten commandments sitting up in the throne room, and he said, oh, you know, this is really the good stuff, you know. Well, then the Ten Commandments would be God because, you know, supposedly God is worshiping God. All right. But if you say, if you say that the ruling thing in heaven is the very essence and being of God, the essence of who he is and the way he is, the way he functions naturally by his own life, then you're not separating that from him. That is him. That is him. And so the whole point is, is that we're coming in and we're being brought in and we're, we're, we're being introduced deeper and deeper and therefore more intimately, constantly, I-N-G, um, to him, to him. <clears throat> to think uh, that a man or woman could really stand behind a pulpit and speak for God is, in a sense, just ridiculous, folks. It's just ridiculous, okay? There is so much to him and so much that I don't know of him. And with all my heart, I want to constantly, I never want to leave that place, you know, um, of pursuing him with all my heart. But at the same time, the more I come to know him, the more I realize I don't know him. I mean, that's just a fact. And, uh, and the, only, the only reason why I feel like I can keep going <laughs> is because he keeps talking to me. And, um, and I will tell you this too, I don't, you know, you may not remember what our subject is or if it's about the kingdom of God or whatever, you may not, but every time I teach, it solidifies this stuff in me more, you know. But he that watereth shall be watered himself. And I'm not doing it selfishly, but I see the benefits of it. I mean, I'm doing it because, but I do want to testify of him and I want to glorify him and I realize, you know, that um, I do a pretty poor job of it on, in, in light, of, I mean, if, if, if you're going to be realistic, in light of his fullness. I do a pretty poor job of it. But if, but if through the sharing it can spark all of us to, to, no longer just be individuals. Remember when I talked about on Sunday about being individual outcasts, but coming together to become the mighty men of God, to, to come together in, a, in one pursuit, one heart. And we, and you know, all of us, those on Skype, those here, those that will listen to this later on, maybe listen to stuff long after we're gone and find that heart, <clears throat> well, then they can find the Lord beyond what we, even we know. And then it would not have been in vain. In other words, you know, with the fullness of God, and I just love my little guys. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> with the fullness of God, you know, and you can't put his fullness up. But if you say his fullness is here, and then, you know, I teach to here. Some of you in Skype are saying, well, I can't see where that line is. That's, that's how low it is, you know. I teach to hear, but we're not talking about the teaching alone. 
We're talking about releasing a spirit that says, I want the Lord, and I, want, I genuinely want the Lord. Not every, every Christian can be stirred at, in a service or a class or something to go, oh, yes, I want the Lord. I mean to bring us to a place where we can't live unless we get the Lord. You know, I, I, I won't go on. You know, I, some of you have heard this. I haven't said it in a long time, but probably a lot of you haven't heard it. And that is, in my probably second year with the Lord, and he began to reveal himself in me and just began a little process that will hopefully fill my whole life. I saw people uh, in my second year. I was in Bible school, and I saw people just losing interest after a while and um, and I said this to the Lord and I meant it and I meant it to this day uh, Lord if I ever lose my passion for you if I ever quit pursuing you in the manner that glorifies you and satisfies you I'm asking you to just make me go insane and I meant that I mean, I meant it. I, I, I mean it today. Some of you are going, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> but I knew when I said it that it was, you know how you get emotional during an altar call or something like that. I knew it wasn't that. I knew it, and I know it now. I still feel that same thing. You know, the way that I have come, and not everybody goes the same way, so your experience is not supposed to be the same in mine, nor your commitments, nor your any of that kind of stuff. But the way that I came, I tell you what, I mean, I was a bad boy, you know? And I just don't want a life apart from the Lord. I just do not want a life apart from the Lord. And so graciously the Lord allows us to have a Bible school in the church and stuff like that. And graciously it allows me to have an excuse <laughs> to seek Jesus and to want to know him and to really, really be able to pursue him. Thy kingdom come. That's what we're supposed to be praying kingdom come so that your will can be done so if his kingdom is the government of his nature then that's how his will comes in earth so it doesn't come through teaching does it it doesn't it doesn't come through teaching it it, it teaching's good it's fine it has its place but his will is done because his kingdom has come. Not because the teaching of his kingdom has come. His will is done when Christ begins to form in you and you are not you anymore, if you know what I mean. Your, your choice, you, I would have chosen that. I know the stuff I would have chosen. I mean, I was a wild child in the 60s of all time periods. But Change has come not because of conversion, as people understand conversion, or the, all those things, but because his kingdom, his nature, his, his, and it brings about his will. And it's stronger than dirt in earth, as it is in earth. Stronger than dirt. A kingdom come. As it is in you guys. That's the way I always look at it. As it is in you guys. I, and that, man, that just, doesn't that just lift up your eyes as it were to see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father gave his beloved Son. How selfless. The Son gave himself for us. The Holy Spirit decided he would, I mean, Jesus was down here. For 33 and a half years, he really only ministered among us for three and a half years. And then he got out, you know. You know. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is 
is stuck. Anybody read my book on uh, Like a Dove? I mean, that's what I'm trying to communicate in that thing is, man, do we see the incredible selfness, selflessness of the Holy Spirit? Okay, so I'm talking about, you know, I lift up, when I think of that prayer, I lift up my eyes and I say, your kingdom, you know? And I don't, I don't see, you know, like a book of Revelation, I don't see millions of people gathered around him and point to them. I see them. And they're one in this spirit. I mean, it all goes back to the simplest song you ever learned as a Christian. We are one in the spirit. His spirit. His nature. And then I can say, that, that right there, that selflessness and everything you do, everything I know about you, let that come in this earth. Just like it is in you guys. <laughs> Do you think he laughs at me sometimes? <laughs> that ain't really the right way to say it, but you're just a little knucklehead and you'll muss my hair. <clears throat> All right, so how is God's will accomplished in heaven? It is done through his nature or by the inward essence of who he is. Some presume that the kingdom is for the future. Now, if, 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 if he begins to govern us by his nature, it's not just present, it's present and future. Can you, yeah. almost said, can you dig it? Am I, back, <laughs> am I backsliding here? What is that? <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> uh, I understand that last week when I was talking, I said, I don't know where these weird thoughts come from. And very quietly in the back, Shay turned to Kelly and says, drugs. <laughs> 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 My dear brother, uh, not much escapes. <laughs> and that's why he'll be out of here at halftime. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So I, I say that about, you know, if his nature really does govern us, then that's present and future, and, and uh, so we don't have to worry about the future in light of this. Do you understand what I'm saying? In light of that reality, future is taken care of. All right. So we don't, so when it comes to the kingdom, we don't like lift everything and put it way off to there and say, well, you know, one day, you know, Next year. yeah. We are, if we're governed, we know that every day is going to bring opportunities for Christ to manifest himself in his own body. In his own body. That's us. Praise God. Okay. <clears throat> so some presume that the kingdom is for the future. In their minds, God has a place of his rule, and that place is far from here, which most people call heaven. Okay? But in a sense, for God to want to, us to go there up to heaven means he gives earth over to the rule of the enemy. Thy kingdom come in earth. But contrary to that, he leaves us here with purpose. The reason why I say that, I mean, okay, uh, you know, the whole point is to get us out of here, you know, God, you know, God wants to get us all out of here. That's what people say. Now, I don't, I don't agree with that. And to me, I mean, I, I, I was barely a few months old and somebody said that and I said, you know, if God wanted to get us out of here, he'd get us saved, then knock us on the head and take us home, you know? Okay, you know, I mean, that's it. He's just going, oh, I just want you up here with me, and I just, I want to get you out of that mess out there, so just receive me. I receive Jesus. <laughs> but guess what? We're all still here. <laughs> so there is, there's purpose in that. And from these scriptures, you could say the purpose is that his kingdom come in us. 
and we will see that there's more to it than that as we get into it, but this is just the pre pre -peration. Um, others believe that the kingdom is bound up in a utopian concept. You know, oh, I can't wait to get into the kingdom of God. Utopia is understood as when everything is to our liking and suits us perfectly. Right? Okay. Well, I mean, that is utopia. Utopia for for me would be that. Utopia for you would be that. Okay, that means we can't live together, none of us, not in heaven, not anywhere, if utopia is that. You see what I mean? So we're all gonna have to, you know, like the Mormons say, live on separate planets. Yes. <clears throat> you know, and everybody, you know, okay, good luck, yeah, you too. <clears throat> Yes. Uh, do you know the literal meaning of utopia? Uh, did it come from the word cornucopia? No. Okay. Well, tell me. Uh, it means no place. No place. Well, guess what? There ain't no place. There ain't no uto utopia. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, so utopia is understood as when everything is to our liking and suits us perfectly. This is not a true kingdom concept. The kingdom comes when his will is done, not ours. So in a certain sense, you could say the only one who gets utopia is him. And yet he's so selfless in giving himself, he would never take advantage of it. <laughs> not in the way flesh would, you understand what I mean. No way that it would be the same. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's turn to John chapter 3. For some reason my Bible won't go to get out of Luke. Every time I get there it flops back to Luke. What are you trying to say, Lord? Yeah. Okay, John chapter 3 and beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So Nicodemus was probably from Texas, don't you think? <laughs> Nicodemus. <clears throat> the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered, and here's another one of those, when someone comes and talks to Jesus and he gives you a completely, okay, you, we know you're of God and da 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 da. What's he going to say? What's he going to say? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What? <clears throat> okay. Let me ask you this question. Is Nicodemus born again at this point? No, he's not. Okay. But apparently he sees miracles and all that kind of stuff. He sees healings and miracles. And yet Jesus said, well, if you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom. Yeah, that's important because, we, we, because a lot of people think the kingdom of God is the fact that we're all endued with power and can do all this stuff except for live for God properly, <laughs> you, know, we can, you know, but we can sure do all these great things. Well, <clears throat> I think those things are ours by oneness with Christ, but the true fullness of the kingdom, you cannot see it without being born again. Okay, I don't wanna dwell too much on that. Okay, verse four, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jeez, Nicodemus. <laughs> really? Is this, is this what you're getting from what I'm saying here? <laughs> you know, clearly, 
he doesn't see the kingdom of God. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <clears throat> and of course, basically, Jesus is saying, he, you know, if it, if it was me standing there and somebody said that to me, I would say, no, that would still be you again. We don't want you again. We want a new birth, not a second birth. We want it to be Christ birthed in you. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so, um, <clears throat> but Jesus' answer is better than mine, and he's, he's a lot sweeter than I am. <clears throat> Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The first one was see it, now it's enter it. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. All right. So flesh, what's the deal with flesh? Okay, is it, is he saying if you're flesh, it's, it's going, if somebody sits on a throne, everybody's just going to act up. But if it's spirit and everybody's born of that, it's all going to work. Is, I mean, I'm asking, what's he saying? Is that? Well, isn't, don't you think that is? That the base, I'm talking about the basic concept of using the term flesh and spirit compared to any other thing that he could have used is how we act and how we live and a difference of, of makeup flesh you know you can read that over in Galatians chapter 5 you know about flesh and whatever the works of the flesh are these you know what I mean I mean you, you flesh has the connotation of selfishness and living for yourself and you know this and that and covetousness and all this kind of stuff so the so when he's talking about the kingdom here he's talking about how it affects how we live Are you okay with that? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> okay, once, uh, let's see. Along with that, many assume that the act of being saved is all there is to entering the kingdom. The act of being saved is all there is to entering the kingdom. All right? Once you're saved, you're in the kingdom. That's what they believe. Well, in a certain sense, you could say that, indeed, you are in the kingdom, but the kingdom is not in you meaning you're not governed by the king just because you just got saved. Anybody find that out? You got saved, and you go, I'm saved, and man, everything's going to be good. I'm not going to do bad stuff anymore. And the first time, you know, a, a, a hog wash shows up, you run over to it and start wallowing in it, you know. <clears throat> it's, and guess what? That doesn't just happen when you first get saved. That still goes on with Christians that have been around for a long time because, as it were, they entered the kingdom, but the kingdom didn't get in them. And if the kingdom primarily is about his kingdom coming in earth as it is in them, then he, God, when he thinks about the kingdom, he's looking for a change not just of... Um, not just a moral change, but Christ, which is beyond moral. Morals are what you do when you outline uh, what's good and evil or not, you know. Christ is what lives his life, and people can look at it and say it's moral, but it's Christ. I mean, think about it. You, you, Jesus isn't going, oh, I need to be moral today. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? I mean, he's not going through it. He's not going, oh, did I, I, did I remember to pray this morning? I don't know. Oh, my God, I might have messed up. He just talks to his father. He doesn't even pray. He talks to his father. That is prayer. So, yes, he prays. But prayer can be a religious term attached to how you try to act the way you think God wants you to when he's not wanting you to act a certain way. He's wanting Christ out of you. And he'll bring forth the prayers. And he, you don't, Besides, you know not how to pray as you ought anyway. 
Anyway, yes. Um, you were talking about salvation versus, you know. Yes. It all of y'all could hear that Mallory was sharing and she said that most of you just are not saved at all <laughs> I don't know that's that'd be up to y'all to figure that out <clears throat> uh, no she didn't say that <clears throat> it was really good I'm sorry you missed it <clears throat> yeah um, you know, basically what she was doing is reiterating this reality that really Jesus here is not talking about salvation at this point. And isn't it funny that in a certain sense, he's not really talking about salvation because the concept of salvation, not that it's not in the Bible and there's truth in relationship to it, but folks, there can be truth in relationship to something and it can be misused by the flesh. Okay, so salvation is all about me and me getting saved and me being blessed and me this and that and whatever. So he doesn't start by going, well, I just want to get all of you saved. I don't want anybody to just burn in hell forever, so I'm just going to save you. He says, you must be born of the spirit of my spirit. You must be born, born of a different thing than what you were yes. and he knows that it's him yes. Christ in you the hope <clears throat> so he's not mincing words and he's not I mean you know somebody would come up to us and go you know oh you know rabbi to you you know or something you know to, oh good teacher you know nobody can teach what you do and oh man nobody can do the works you do unless God's with them you know we go yeah I know yeah I know Jesus doesn't affirm that I'm sorry, crap at all. He doesn't affirm that. He doesn't affirm, and he won't affirm that. He says, look, unless, you know what I mean? You must be born again. And it's not you going back in and coming back out. Hey, is this it? Yeah, you know. Oh, we could say a lot of things, but we're not going to. <clears throat> because some of us are of God, <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> Sharon, come get your daughter. <clears throat> All right, so um, let me make sure, let's see. Once you're saved, you're in the kingdom. Well, like I said, in a certain sense, that seems true, but the kingdom is not in you. It's not just the fact of the kingdom of God in general, but how it is to be affected in our lives here on earth. That kingdom come in earth. Not on, in earth. The Gospels present us with a picture of what the kingdom is to look like in us once we're joined to Jesus in death and resurrection. What am I saying? You, the Gospels are showing us Jesus live in the kingdom. But he's not living the kingdom. He's the king. And it's his government rule that he wants in us by the same king living in us. The same life of the king living in us. And that's the key. You know, it's not just, oh, I made him king, therefore he's boss, therefore do what he says. That's ridiculous. It is that life 
is what I want in everyone. That's the Father speaking. I want that life that is Christ. I want him. And I can call him king, but he's not going to rule in you as king, but as life. And that life will be king in you. That life will have the government, will, will govern you. Therefore, we call it king, but it's not title guy. It's the life of that one that he, that one which is Christ. I, I don't know. I just, I'm sorry, but I, I try to constantly divide these things because I hear so much and I hear people talking and it's like, okay, well, you know, oh, King Jesus. But is it Jesus? Is it, is it just king you're saying? But Jesus is detached because God said oh, Jesus and king, so they go together. So just say King Jesus. Or, oh, my king. Oh, my, how about, oh, my life. Govern yes. over me. Hallelujah. And my tendencies. In other words, let your kingdom come. <clears throat> and if that's true now, if that's true, then it's no good running around trying to get everybody just saved. And this is a, this is a fact that I saw. Of course, I've seen it for years in a million different ways. But I saw it as a missionary, <clears throat> you know, of you know, brand new out of Bible school in my early 20s. We went to Jamaica, and we're not in the big cities. We're off in the bush, and there's <clears throat> and but there would be evangelists from the United States who would come through. And they would come in and say, we're going to set up a, uh, an evangelistic meeting in your little town here. And, and uh, we want all of the pastors uh, that, that are around the area to come and be a part of it and everything. And, and so they, they put chairs up on the stage. And, of course, we don't do anything. We're just figureheads so that they can look like they got all the passage in the city. <laughs> of course, and they're filming and taking pictures and all this stuff. And, they, and so they start preaching and all this kind of stuff, and they don't know anything about Jamaicans, much less other countries where, you know, you could, you, you know, Jamaica is like mountains and stuff and just tropical, green is everywhere. You could stand at the edge of the road that goes, you know, to Kingston or Montego Bay. You could just stand, just pick any spot right there and just stand on the edge of the road facing all the green and just start singing and you'll get a crowd. They'll just come up, at, all of a sudden you'll see someone coming up out of the green and someone coming up over there and here they come and they'll all gather around because they, because there's nothing going on. You know, well this is the best thing that's happened in five years. <laughs> you know, and so, so when you, when you say, okay, we're going to have a revival meeting. Well, they, you know, half of them don't even know what that is. But, you know, okay, so they, they come. And so you end up with a couple of thousand people. And it just looks incredible. But we missionaries, we know all of those people. You know. And we know the one that has been to the altar a million times and never changed one bit. And may just come down there so that they give him a Bible or some literature that he can't even read. But just want, because they get nothing. They got nothing. You know. And they take it back with them and I got something out of that. You know. <clears throat> and so we, we would watch time and time again the same people come to the altar and nothing really changed. And all these people, they'd get them shouting and everything, you know, and just... Oh, and, and Jamaicans love to sing, so, you know, you just get up, you work them to a lather. And then when they leave, these missionaries leave, of course, they send you, the missionaries, they send you their newsletter. And it's just got all these people. And well, there were, you know, all the people that came to the altar, that's counted as a salvation. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters other than did you pray this prayer. So there were, you know, we had... A hundred salvations. 
and we changed Jamaica. Man, I've I heard that more times than not. We've changed Jamaica, our ministry. And we had all these pastors backing us. And then we, after they're gone, we have to pick up the mess. Really, I'm just telling you. And you have to, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. It would have, you know, and this is just one man's opinion. Everything that I'm saying here is just one man's opinion. And it's not a very popular guy or not at all famous, infamous, infamous guy and uh, pastor of a little bitty church. So I really don't count. So my opinion of what I said, don't even think that that's the way it is. But for us, it was the way that it was. And it would have been better had they not come. It would have been better. And we, we would see people, oh, I, I don't even want to go into it. We, that's, that's enough. The, the goal is not just to get people to sign a card or pray a little prayer. The goal is to, is to bring the kingdom. You could say it another way, make disciples. You know, make disciples or bring the kingdom in people. And so, let's see, we're, I guess we're not quite there yet. Um, so these things burden my heart from a few years in salvation and then, you know, through Bible school and then on the mission field of immediately after graduating and being there for a couple of years until they ran us off because they went communist and wouldn't renew our visas. But it made me, because it was a different culture and a different thinking, it made me not, I'm just gonna, and I'm not trying to be critical of anybody, I'm really not, I just want Jesus. And I want people to get Jesus, and I want it to be real, and I want people to be transformed, not just save what, you know, I'm not going to hell, yay! Now I can live like hell, you know, but I'm saved. And, and I don't even mind the living like hell part of it. What do you mean by that? What I mean is, if it's not Jesus, you can live like hell or you can act like you're the sweetest thing on the planet and it's not Jesus and it doesn't glorify the Father. He didn't put Jesus in you so you could, you know. <laughs> I just know that the Father's plan is about his son. It's not about a religious thing that we do and we mark it down a certain way and it doesn't count anything in the heart of God. It only counts in our religious realms. And like I said, having gone through that and having experienced that, um, uh, it, it, may, it made me start being not suspicious or it made me just start being aware and start weighing, okay, now what does that mean? You know, because it's easy to fall into this culture and just go along with what it says. And this is the way, you know, this is the words we use, like the kingdom come on earth as it is when it's in, you know what I mean? Just go, you know, and just fall in with everything. It's hard to break out of that. It's hard to break out of that. But when you've been in another culture and you look, I bet Patty's done this bunch in her years here. It's just like, you know, what's that about? You know, I'm serious. I know that she has. And, you know, uh, but, but it helps you. Scott also has been on the mission. It helps you to divide and to, and to not question them, but question in your mind, wait a minute, what is my definition of this? You know, if you get into questioning them, then you do get suspicious, and then you are just critical of everything. That's not the goal. You can't get critical, or you're going to, that, there goes your ministry. It's not about them. It's about right here. You know, I have to change my definitions, you know. Anyway, let's see. I need to get, I need to get to a stopping point here. 
In the Gospels, Jesus is demonstrating the way of the kingdom, but he is also regularly presenting the concept of entering the kingdom. The point is that he not only wants to show that there is another kind of government, but he has come to bring us into it also. <clears throat> That's called death with Christ and resurrection with him. See, it's different than trying to talk somebody into something. <laughs> Uh, little did uh, his hearers know that their entry into it would be through their own death with him at the cross. You know, it's like, oh, I want to enter the kingdom. I want to follow you. You know. Jesus said, well, then forsake all and give up everything. And go, I can't give up my flesh. I can't give up this stuff. I can't give up what's important. I can't give up what governs me and what I use to govern other people. Jesus, he's let, he walked away, and Jesus was sad. It says it made it was sad. <clears throat> In fact, they could not see it, and many today do not see it either. Talking about the kingdom, we cannot see it because our idea of entering the kingdom is usually synonymous with going to heaven or something like that. Many people believe that the only thing Scripture is telling us is how we can get to heaven. That's the Bible is just telling us how to get to heaven. In fact, very few verses in all the Gospels spell that concept out. <clears throat> More of it, obviously, is said in the epistles, but this is Gospel. Yes, Lord. See, as soon as I did that, he said, remember what we're teaching here. And the subject, of the, the point of the Gospels is to teach the kingdom of God. Thank you. I got yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll pick this up. Oh, yeah, Kelly, come up here. Uh, she's got a little uh, pronouncement that she wants to make. We have two birthday girls, one here in the church and one on Skype, and both of them love Jesus, and both of them are greatly loved. So Debbie and Mary, we want to sing happy birthday to you, and we have cupcakes.